we going to talk about um, the new response? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, I think French Party said this, but in fact, the, the regime in which TDBFT is by far uh, mostly used is linear response. Right? In fact, if you're not living in the field and you talk to somebody about TDBFT, they, they many times they often uh, assume that you're doing you're talking about linear response. What do we mean by that? We mean calculations of spectra, excitation energies, response, right? Oscillator strengths, this kind of thing. And there, um, of course, it's based on the basic London Rose theorem that uh, Hardy presented. But in fact, uh, we can simplify the equations a little bit so that we get directly information about spectra without having to do go through the time dependence and everything like this. Right? So I'm going to just show you a little bit today how that formalism works and what the basic equation of linear response is. So let's see. So let me just write a little bit down. So the response will say, um, let's see, uh, the is for spectra and response. Uh, and this is most calculations. Most calculations uh, that use TDBFT to do this. And I'm just going to put out a little plan so that we can refer to it as we go along and check off what we've done and what we've done. So the plan for today, or this morning, at least in my lecture. Um, so the plan is first I'm going to um, talk about the response of observables, response of an observable. And in fact, this is going to be very general. I, uh, yeah, it's going to, I'm just going to remind you of some things that you will have learned in your quantum mechanics class about perturbation theory. Um, uh, just uh, how to get and get an expression for the response of an observable rather than the wave function. Um, and then we will talk about the density density response function, which is the, the central object in linear response in TDDFT. Why it's called density density? And sounds a bit strange, but you'll see why uh, when you when you when we uh, we do this response theory. Um, let's see what else did I want to say. Um, oh yeah, we, we call this chi. So. Yeah. And then uh, this is all actually without talking anything about TDBFT. Then we are going to say how do we get chi from TDBFT? Um, we get from TDBFT and. We're going to talk about what we call a Dyson-like equation that does this for us, so from the Cohn-Sham system. And then I probably will have run out of time by here. Um, but if not, I will say some properties of what we call the exchange correlation kernel. Right? So this is our plan, and we'll, we'll go through and we'll see how we go. So um, I'm going to assume that uh, most people remember, I know, or have done some type of perturbation theory at least in your classes, I'm just going to kind of remind you how that, uh, what that works, uh, how that works, right? Okay, so a reminder of time-dependent uh, perturbation theory. Okay, so, and this is again, so again, yeah, this is general. Not Okay, so just forget to DFT for a minute, and we're just going to sorry, remind you of the time dependent. So we usually have, what we do is we start with a Hamiltonian, which is time dependent, and we break it into an unperturbed piece, plus a part that's time dependent that we turn on at t equals zero. Now, this fact that we're going to turn it on at t equals zero uh, means that these cases that Heidi had mentioned, this adiabatic switching, is immediately not considered. We're not going to, because of course that has been on forever, which is very slowly. Right? So this is a perturbation that we just simply turn on at time equals zero. This is the case that we do in physics mostly, right? We just turn on our laser field at some time. Okay, what's H0? H0 is the unperturbed Hamiltonian, which we will take as the kinetic energy plus the electron electron interaction, let's see, with that one of our plus we'll call it V external zero. Which we, as what we mean, is the laser, uh, the at atoms and nuclear attraction. Okay. And please stop me if um, you can't, uh, if you have a question as we go along, or if you can't read what I'm writing here. Right. Um, okay. So this is our Hamiltonian, and we begin 
with we 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 begin in a state um, psi zero, which we're going to take to be the ground state, right? We'll take as the ground state. And the idea in preservation theory is that we want to solve, we want to know what the solution of i d by dt of psi t equals h of t psi of t is um, to first order in delta b. So that's how that's what we really need to do, right? Okay, so um, you might remember that what we usually do is we go to the interaction picture, and I want, uh, I just have to write down an equation that you will uh, use later on. So in the interaction picture, the idea is that, well, there's always, even if we didn't have this term, there's a trivial time evolution of the wave function, the e to the minus i e zero t over h bar. We don't want to have to fuss with that, right? So we just eliminate it. So we define our interaction picture wave function, which is time dependent in general, but we define it by eliminating the evolution due to h0. Okay, and but this means that our um, operators, and I'm going to use O uh, with a hat for an operator, in the interaction picture also has some time dependence now. It's the Schrodinger operator, but then stand, uh, you know, so sandwiched like. Um, or surrounded by, um, did I get the signs right? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, and then when we do this, and we plug this into this equation, we get a simpler equation for the interaction picture wave, or cat, uh, wave function, which is simply delta V in the interaction picture of I of T of psi of T. So this is what we have here. Okay. So very good, almost, we almost gone past the step. We now need to turn this into response to an observable case. Can you speak what do you mean by interaction picture Yeah, so, so um, in, in quantum mechanics, you know, the Schrodinger picture, Heisenberg picture, I, inter so here we're going to define an interaction picture where we eliminate from the Schrodinger picture or wave function the free evolution due to H0, right? So in other words, the e to the i e zero t over h bar, right? So if this was a, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So the, the the reason is because then if you look at the equation of motion for psi i, it depends only on on the what we're perturbing it with. Yeah. Okay. So now we want to get uh, response of the observable from here. So all we do is we oh sorry before we do this actually we're not quite done we need to solve this in first order right so let's solve this in first order so we bring this up. So we, we solve solving, we end up getting psi i of t, and we, we sort of do this iteratively. So you get um, psi zero, and then you have the first term, which is just we just simply integrate minus n t dt prime delta v i t prime psi zero. Uh, yeah, okay, psi zero. Right. And then you have plus order delta v i squared. Right? So this is kind of the first or the linear order. So how did we get, if you can imagine, um, you, you're just integrating this function, right? But we do it iteratively, right? So you, you end up put, if I put psi of t here, then it would be complete, right? But we don't know psi of t prime, right? Psi of t prime. So we, we just uh, stick it back in here, right? So the usual. Okay, so this is what we want. This is our first order, right, this is the linear term, the linear response of psi, right? This is the linear response of the wave function. Okay, so now we want to get our observable. So this means that now we look at the observable as a function of time, which is psi i of t, the observable in the interaction picture, psi i of t. Of course, you can use any picture here, but we just choose the interaction picture and we stick with it. And we put this in, and you can see that you'll get the, the easy term, the operator in the ground state, right? There, are, yeah, we can start in the ground state, and then we'll get two terms well, uh, because we have, you know, two terms in the linear and delta v because I could choose psi zero and and this term here, or I could choose the other way around. 
and then I have delta V squared, right? But in fact, those two terms are related. You can write them as a commutator, so we'll do that. Psi zero of the operator, the interaction picture, delta V, I T prime, and then I have so then I have so this is uh, right so this is then uh, we can call this then this response right this is delta of operator and first order. Okay, so this gives you, this commutator then gives you um, this first order in time um, uh, uh, correction. Right? Okay, so now we're going to look at the response of the density. Okay, so this is the response of the observable. So now, how do we, well, now we really want to know the response of the density. So we want to know what this is. And then we think, well, if we want to use this kind of formalism, we want to know the operator that corresponds to the density. And then if you can kind of convince yourself quite quickly that the density operator could be written like this. Okay, so what does this do? This is a, this basically puts a delta function everywhere you find your electron. And if you imagine then taking psi n hat of r psi, then you can see that you end up getting the density that was defined before by uh, hardly earlier today or yesterday, right? By in the graph state case doesn't really matter, right? So it just it just picks out it just gives you the right expression. Okay, so now we have our density and we have our expression here. And so we can go ahead, oh, and then, um, then so we have our density here. We're going to take this for, we're going to take this for our observable, O of T. Um, o, at least, sorry, this is going to be our operator. And then we're going to take, uh, now we want to use delta V, but we're going to, uh, here, this was very general. This could be any perturbation we're going to apply to the system. Here, we're going to specifically look at p potentials which are scalar and one body, right? And the reason of doing that is that then again, I can write any any multiplicative one body operator can also be written kind of with this uh, using this operator. So I could write any any delta v of t right, could be written as delta v of r and t as a function multiplied by this density operation. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, for the um, uh, the operating of the density. Yeah. You have the r t term there first, the left. But then you will somehow drop it and have it. Uh, yes, okay. So here, yeah, so here I'm talking about the operator. Yeah. Here I'm talking about once I, so for example, if I take, if I want to know what my density is, yeah. then I evaluate it on some time dependent wave function, right? But this is the operator yeah. that, and this is my time dependence is coming in through with a wave function. Okay. Right. Or I could put this in the interaction picture, right? And I could have an ni. And, so on. Okay, so the summation over there is only for the spatial delta. Yeah. So th this is this is this is basic. This is all we mean here is that uh, if this is the observable that if you took the sandwich of this observable and any wave function, you will get what we normally call the density, this integral n psi r r two through r n yeah squared dr two dr n. Right. So, if, so if I, so, you know, we we're thinking of a density like this, right? But we want to, in this formalism, it's easiest if we actually, uh, you know, uh, try, uh, think of the observ the uh, an operator corresponding to the density, and think of the response of that operator, response of the observable corresponding to that operator. And that's that's the that's the reason why. 
it's not the only way to do it, right? I mean, one could, uh, one could actually, yeah, uh, just um, you know, think about preservation theory on Psi itself and, and go through uh, and do it like this. But in some sense, uh, you'll see that I think this is there's an advantage in this way. We'll see some uh, form, neat formalism coming. I'm not sure if you yeah. can follow why the last one, what's the reasoning behind the last one? Okay, so if we think about, it, so any multiplicative one by the operator, what do we mean by that? Well, and without thinking about delta functions, we could write that as um, the sum on i equals 1 to n, this means it's a one body operator taking one, one operator at a time, and we think of um, delta v of r i and t. So we're thinking of something that this is a, this, this you'll be happy with probably, right? That yeah, this is how we think of our multiplicative one body operator. It takes one electron at a time and it simply is a, a operator local in space, right? Okay, now if, if we think about the again, the sandwich of this and a many body wave function, you can we can see that it's equivalent to taking the sandwich of this. Yeah. So um so yeah. just to be sure. Yes. Yeah. And the density you want, it's a, it's a density operator. Yeah? This, is this is the density operator. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's operation of the fixed R and position operator. Is true? Say it again. It's the fixed R and the position operator, which is R I. Yes. Very good. Yeah. This is the this is a parameter. So okay. think of that. This this thing here is a parameter, not an operator. Exactly. exactly. But in the delta function, the second one is Exactly. That's it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, that's good. Okay, good. Um, all right. So, so now we have these two. And all we're going to do is plug it into this to get the density response, right? We're, so we're thinking of the operator here as the density. Um, and, and our time to many wave function is whatever it is. And, uh, and we uh, actually... We, again, think of the beginning in the ground state, so this is all we care about, the initial state. And we want to look at, this is going to be that now the density operator in the interaction picture. All we do is we put these d to the i h 0 t's around it. This is going to be now the potential here, again, with this operator um, around it. So you end up getting, and it's, you know, it's not um, too tricky, I just draw this right out of formula, so you end up then getting so if we call this equation, well, maybe I don't have to. So you put these two terms in here, and you end up getting this. So I'm just going to write it in this kind of way. And then this is my where this thing here this here is a step function which turns on only when t is greater than t prime and now we have our commutator that came right? so we have actually here and that find the interaction picture of t Okay, so this this here, you can so now we can see why it's called the density. So so this uh, if if we imagine putting this in here, you can see that all I've done is I I actually to do the dt prime, I just said well let's write it as an integral from zero to infinity, but we only want to integrate from zero to t. So we deal with that by putting a step function. Right? Okay. And then you have the other terms. Um, this, deep, the, uh, the, this here doesn't appear in the commutator because it's just a function. This is the operator. So you just have the operator between n hat and n hat. Right? This is why it's called the density density operator, or density density response function. Yes. It's, uh, you have on the left side, it's, it's delta n because you because you're looking at the difference between a time zero and a time. Yes, so I'm looking at this. So I, I have this is delta o. Ah, so you're not looking at the entire expression. Right, okay, exactly. the, the time zero. Yes. 
So this I'm defining as delta O. Now what I'm putting in for this is the density. Yeah. And I'm, but then, you know, what I needed to know, well, what should I put here, right? And this is why I made a and so this, yeah, this is called the density um, density response function. It's also sometimes called the susceptibility. Or susceptibility. Um, and it's basically a central object, um, central object uh, for, for the new response. For, uh, I guess, TDDFT linear response because I mean I have we haven't done any TDFT yet, right? Because these are all full wave functions, right? But you can see that we want to know the response of the density to a perturbation, right? So it's kind of begging for TDFT, right? Because we don't want to find the wave function. We want to get the density response in a different way. We can we can get it from Cochin. And that's what we'll do next. Right? Okay. So I'll, I'll show you how that works in a minute. Oh, but before we do this, um, so maybe it's about this. TDDFT yeah. um, Before we do this, right, oh, sorry, any questions about this? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm sorry, can you explain what's the uh, response to that CS again? Because it looks like you're just taking the functional derivative of n, but I can't tell if notation wise that it's just be better just defining my. So I'm not taking any functional derivative of anything. Okay. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting in here. Let me get another comment. Um, so I'm, I'm putting, I'm putting for the operator, I'm putting the n hat. So I'm putting here, I'm putting n hat phi, and here I'm putting this, the integral d to the r delta v of r and uh, and then uh, and then again the n hat. And so the thing is that now this is a commutator. Sorry, this should have a hat on. This, this is a commutator. So and this is just a function, right? So this this drifts out of the commutator, right? And that's what that's where this is. Right? And then what we're left with is n hat and n hat, right? And so this is where this comes in, right? That's where that makes sense. Well, so I see the, I see the right hand side, but I still don't understand definitionally what is delta n. Okay, so delta n. So if I so let me see. So if I have, let's say if I want to define n of r and t, right? So this is this thing here. Right, and I, I said um, that you could write this like this, right? With that funny okay, but we want to know this only to linear order, right? So we want to know. So I could. So then I could write this as um, I could do linear response, and as, as we have, and um, we can take psi of t like this, put it in, and if we do that, um, then we get something that looks like n zero of r. Right? So the way the expectation okay. and then I have a first order term delta n of R T, and then I have terms that go like delta v squared, which I don't care about. Right? Okay. Sure. And then this is it. Okay. Good. Okay. So, so, so then let's go back a second and ask ourselves. Well, I said that we were trying to get response, and um, we're trying to get a response from this. In other words, excitation energies, right? And I said, well, this gives you this, this is the central object, and you know this will give you the response. But, but I don't see any energies here. So anyone can anyone tell me or guess how we're going to actually extract frequencies or energies from this kind of time dependent function? If if you're in quantum mechanics and you have some time dependent function, and you say, well, what are the frequencies of this involved in this? What do we yeah. do? Or, yeah, exactly. The Fourier transform. So that's what we want to do now, right? So. Um, so and then we're going to see how this works. So to do the Fourier transform, then we need to know what the t minus t t dependence is and t t prime dependence, right? So um, yeah. So let's see. So like, maybe I write here. Um, not such a pen either. Uh, I'll stick to black. Okay. So, um, but how to get uh, 
uh, excitation energies. Okay. And we Fourier transform T minus T prime to omega. Okay, then so that means we have to know the T minus T prime dependence. That's nice. This is here. We have to know how to do this here. In fact, it's not so tricky. So there's a few steps, and I'll just outline how it works. And then you can, I'll leave it as an exercise, right? So let me outline how it works kind of in red. Okay, so firstly, this commutator, we're just going to write it out in two terms. We've got n hat times n hat, uh, n, n1 of these arguments, n, sorry, n i of these arguments, n i of these arguments. In between them, I'm going to stick an identity in the form of the completeness of states. So these are many body interacting eigenstates, right? Excitations, right? And the reason for doing that is that we know that this operator here, for example, has the form of e to the i h0 t n hat r without any time dependence, e to the minus h0 t. That's how we define the interaction picture, right? And why this is very nice is that then we have this up to on psi 0. So we can see that this is going to give us our e to the minus i times the excitation energy times t, right? And on the other side, we have a psi naught, right? So then we have over here, we have then e to the i e0 times t pulling out, right? Acting on this side, right? On this side, 0 here. Right? So you can kind of convince, after you go, go through this, you can kind of convince yourself that once you account for both terms and all the, ex all the time dependencies, these nice exponentials, um, you get things which are, uh, are you, 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 get, you get time dependencies, time dependencies like, so first you step function t minus t prime, and then you have stuff like e to the i, e i, I wrote where I followed up, e to the i, and to t minus t prime. Things like this, right? So I went like this. So if you work it, you can work it through yourself and you see this. And then we know how to Fourier transform because these are just nice exponentials. So then we define, and let me just give you the results, but it's just really a couple of lines, right? So, so then you define the frequency dependent response function, and um, which uh, let me just uh, define it first. So you do the Fourier transform as we said. I have R and T, R prime T prime, e to the I omega T minus T prime. So omega now is the Fourier transform variable. And now we imagine putting this type of thing in here. You can see it's going to just pull down into the denominator the factors. So you end up getting the sum of j equals 1 up to infinity, all the eigenstates, right? The numerator has these transition density matrix elements. So it's the original density operator sandwiched between the ground state and the accepted state. The j excited state. And then you have this omega minus ej minus e r e0. And then just to make the integrals all work, you have a little bit of a number. So you could uh, more precisely have got the limit as eta goes to 0 plus i eta plus 0 plus. Right? This, this essentially um, puts the poles just below the axes, which is actually required for causality. That I want to right? So you get this plus another term which is the complex conjugate of this term, but with omega going to minus omega because of the commutator and so on, right? So this just pops out of the function. So this is the result. And again, it's not TDDFT yet, right? Because these, this is the many body ground state wave function. This is the many body excited state wave function, right? These are the many body energy differences. So for any realistic system, you can't calculate this. We, can't, we just don't have access to these options. Right? The question is then, how do we get this? Right? So well, before I do this, let me just, um, how do we get this from TDDFT? Right? So firstly, just to dwell on the structure of this a little bit more, you can see that there's poles, there's poles at the excitation energy excitation energies, right? Like 
we call them om capital omega three injective system, omega j, which is uh, ej minus e zero. Yes, yeah, sorry. I just have a small question. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the exponent, um, uh, e, e to the power i, uh, ei minus the uh, uh, one year between the red. Yes. Yeah, that ei is what? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so this. This is, so what we did was we uh, to evaluate the commutator. I put in this identity. Yeah. yeah. So this, this is these are uh, the interacting excited states, the i interacting excited state. So like the sun, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, I labels that, and this is the energy of that state. Okay. So the uh, many body energy, right? Okay. Yeah. But e naught here is the ground state energy. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So this is precisely these excitation energies. Right. So then you could also write EI and not EJ? Yes, I just, I'm sorry. I could, I'm just uh, very, I just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's J and I and you could have yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yes, so, yes, good point. So when, in fact, you can show that for this, for the setup we have here, where we begin in a stationary state, in particular the ground state, the response depends only on this difference, t minus t prime. One can, in fact, do response around a non-stationary state. And, in fact, there are some experiments for which really calls for this, like trans transient spectroscopy experiments, where you pump your system, and then you want to know what, what are the resonance of my system, how does it evolve. Then you're doing response around a non-stationary state. Then you can always define this. It's much harder to define than this, because you kind of always you need two frequencies at the point. Because you're, you know, you're or more, right? Because you, you have, uh, it's no longer invariant with respect to the client, right? So, you know, so we, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay good. Um, any other questions? Okay, yeah, uh, yes, sorry. Um, can you give more comments about this a sample of I? Yeah. Because if we look at the definition of pi chi, there is no. It's a unique map. You mean the sum over uh, this? Yes, this. Well, the I. Yeah. There is definition of the I that you gave before. Well, actually, so this is the excited. So what these are are the unperturbed states of H0, right? So if I, um, let me see. Uh, there is definition of this wave function of the Second book, on the second book. Well, um, oh, I'm sorry. This is where, yes, okay, this is my fault. The notational glitch. This here is standing for interaction picture. Sorry. This here is indexing my uh, eigenstate. This is probably why. Yeah, oh, the H0. Sorry. H0. Okay, let me just fix it, right? So I'll just put the J here. So this stands for interaction picture. Yes. Yeah, and as the ground state in the interaction picture, right, once I've done the perturbation. This here is the interaction picture again. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and, 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 and here I've inserted the identity in the form of excited states of H0. So unperturbed. Yeah, so this, so in other words, H0 psi j is Ej psi j. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not yeah. And E zero is E zero. Yes, the ground state energy. So, so when J equals zero, it's also. Yes, in fact, that's yes. true. Okay. You do, but in fact, you have another term here. But you need to add it to your next. You know, to my. Uh, your, to the ground state. So this is over yeah. all states, including the ground state. Including yeah, because so the, to get the completeness, yeah. right, we need to include all the states in the Hilbert space. So this includes the ground state. In fact, then you might think, oh, well, that's weird, isn't it? But it's not because, in fact, this term here, and when the, in the special case ej is equal to e0, they cancel. But, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Sorry about that. About, uh, yeah, so so I'll, I should have, this is why I hit the j here. If I can fix it. Yeah. OK. Yes. And, Sorry. Yes. Um, so the C C omega plus omega uh, minus yeah. omega. What exactly is this term? So it's the complex conjugate of this. Okay. And it was a bit lazy, and okay. I just did I so. And and also you put the minus. You this goes to minus <laughs> omega. So in fact, if you think about this, is if you put a minus omega here, and then you pull the minus out, you get omega plus e j minus. E. So these are like backward excitations, 
right? So there's excitation, de excitation as well. So yeah, this is all of EJ equals E0. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, any other questions? This is also often called the spectral representation or Lehman representation of chi. Um, and and you, as I was, I was just going to say that you know you can see that there's poles if I draw the po and and the poles are the excitation energies. In fact, they're slightly below the axis here. And then there's a branch cut for the continuum, if you like, um, um, and on this side too. This fact that it's slightly below, in fact, relates to causality, um, and I'll, I'll I'll come back to that uh, later. Um, but also, the, or I want to say that the residues um, give you um, transition strengths, if you like, transition dipole moments, or whatever you like, transition densities. So the strength of the transition, how, how strong is that transition, right? Because it, it, yes. Sorry to ask again, no. uh, this, this, in the denominator, the O plus is a creator operator? Yeah? No, I'm sorry. Okay, so let me, let me write it like this. It goes to zero. It goes to zero from above. So E is a little bit positive. Okay. And then and then this is this is how we write this. So it just it just pushes them a little bit down. Partly we need it to converge this integral, right? Okay, so now so we've done this, we haven't done TDFT yet. We now want to get chi from TDFT. So how do we do this? So first what we need to do is figure out the function of the dependencies. How we set this up, that uh, that the response function depends only on the on the v external zero, right? On the unperturbed system, right? Now we know by by, uh, by the Gross theorem that we could say that that means that the actually by the Hohenberg Kuhn theorem, right? That if, if something depends only on v zero, right? Then it depends. Then you could write it as a function of n zero because it's a one-to-one map. So. That means we know. So since we know that, um, so we know that n. So we could write uh, v zero gives you chi, right? So therefore, by the Hohenberg cohn theorem, chi is a functional of n zero. Okay. So that's it, it. Doesn't depend on the perturbed density, but probably the unperturbed system. Okay. So now we want to get this from T D F T. So we want to get this from the cohn sham system from the Cohn-Sham system. So, we perturb the Cohn-Sham system in the same way. So we take phi zero, which corresponds to this density ground, the ground state density, um, and apply a perturbation of delta V S of T, and later, and so let's see what happens. But we're just simply going to write down exactly what we wrote down here, right? Except now, for the Cohn-Sham system, right? Non-interrupting system. It's going to be simpler in a sense, right? And then we're going to say, well, but wait, because the density responses should be the same. Therefore, whatever I get from my, I'm going to write this for the Cohn-Sham system. I'm going to have a Cohn-Sham response function. I'm going to have delta V s. Whatever I get for the delta n has to be the same as this one. So this will then give me an equation that relates the chi of the interacting system. You have five minutes? Okay, <laughs> okay so I'll, I'll, I'll speed up a little bit. And the, the interacting system's chi with that of the Cohn-Sham system, the non-interacting I guess I could um, also continue this in the afternoon. I'm sure we have a lecture. So, okay, so, so we're going to follow the same procedure, same procedure for the linear response 
of the content to define chi s. So we write delta n of r and t, same way, 0 to infinity dt prime, q r prime. So we imagine just doing exactly the same thing we did before, but now the mind is the cone sham system, not the interactive system. Okay. And now you see chi s, r and t, we get delta n, r t, by delta v s, r prime t prime. So we're going to write the kind of the same equations, right? So this is this, well, high, this is for the Kohn-Sham system. Um, then uh, let's also write down the Lehman representation, right? <clears throat> Between the Fourier transform, what we're going to get, if we imagine the same thing, just thinking of the non-interacting Kohn-Sham system, these now become non-interacting Kohn-Sham states. But these non-interacting Kohn-Sham states are slated determinants of orbitals. So in fact, I can just write it in terms of the orbitals, and in fact, when you do this, you get this expression here. I'll just write it down. It's a sum over all orbitals, these are the occupation numbers of the orbitals. Uh, I have put in a spin thing here, which I did not before. Um, okay, so then I have here by k star r by j by j star r prime by k r prime divided by omega minus epsilon k minus epsilon k and then plus i eta again the limit that eta goes to zero a little bit from above right so this is the analogy right so these are now the cone sham orbitals of the unperturbed vs that corresponds to the density n zero these are the occupation numbers, occupation numbers, which are just one or zero of these orbitals, right? Because these are non-interacting states. So, and so, uh, yeah. So these are all the. This is this, this sum goes to infinity. It's all the uh, occupied and unoccupied ones. You can see if, if in this sum, the double sum, if j is equal to k, that means both are occupied. For example, or both are unoccupied. If they both are occupied, then then you get zero because one minus one is zero, right? And it doesn't contribute, which makes sense because you don't get a response from an occupied to an occupied, right? If they're both non-zero, then again they're not occupied, so you can't. It doesn't contribute to the response. You only get a contribution here when you go from an occupied to an unoccupied orbital, right? This is then one or negative one. And these are called single excitations of the system. Right. Okay, so this is the conchem. And then, I guess I don't have too much time, but perhaps what I can do, I'll ask you guys. Right. So, um, this, so, this is the conchem. We still, just, yeah, the point is then, though, however, that um, this is completely different, completely different from chi. The poles, for example, e.g., the poles are at the cone sham single excitations, which takes an occupied to an unoccupied orbital, not at the many body excitations that are linear combinations of these. So I'll just, I'll just tell you what you do, right? So, so but uh, we can get chi from chi s, and uh, if if you're interested to see how that works, then I'll, I'll take a hand poll later. I can tell you. I can begin the my lecture in the afternoon explaining how you go from chi to chi s, uh, basically using uh, functional. To, uh, Functional differentiation, basically, you take this, you take the definition of chi, and you use the functional chain rule. And you play with the equations, and you get this exchange correlation kernel. So I can begin um, the lecture in the afternoon to show you how you get this. Uh, the result is um, that you find a relation of the following form. And this is uh, the, the central equation in TDDFT uh, linear response. You get 
um, you get it's like the Dyson like equation to um, highest R minus R, uh, R1 minus R2. And that plus um, so this exchange correlation kernel. Okay. And then multiply it by chi. So R2, R prime. So this is the central equation. And T give T the new response. Right? It tells you how to get the interacting density density response function, which contains all the information about how a system interacts and many body system responds to a perturbation. Right? Tells you the excitation energies, the transitions of those, the strengths of those. But on the right hand side here, if you could, and again, it's a Dyson like equation, so you kind of dissolve iteratively or there's other ways, which I'll get to, right? Uh, but um, you, 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 everything here, this is a cohen sham response function. This here I haven't defined. In fact, um, this is the functional derivative of the time of the exchange correlation potential. Um, the Fourier transform of this with respect to t to minus t prime again. So again, this is not the time. This is what Hardy mentioned in the full TDDFT case. We only need here oops, variations of this right around the ground state, right? Evaluated in the ground state. Crisis and response. Okay, so I should stop to ask the questions, but then, for, yeah, if, if, uh, I'll ask you again whether you want to hear more about how this is derived and a little bit more about linear response and properties of the kernel in the afternoon, and then I talk about memory, or if you, I haven't ever seen them on here. But I'll ask the questions now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. have found it from Koshan P is uh, in the integral yeah we integrate over R1 and R2 yes which are the positions of uh, R1. yeah so 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 these are so um, these are spatial variables yeah yeah so they're not they're not labeling any electron or anything in particular is that what I understand yeah. so what does it mean Ah, okay, that's a good question. Okay, so I guess we could let, let's go back to asking how physically what does what does even this mean physically, right? So in fact, we'll need the chi or the response function, right? So I was I meant to draw this kind of sketch here, right? So so let's say we have our blob of matter, right? This is our density, n of r. In fact, this is our ground state density. It's just sitting there. So what this chi tells us is that if we poke the system here at r and t. Or no, let me poke it at r prime t prime, right? So I'm going to just like uh, tickle it or poke it here, right? Poke it here. Mm -hmm. Then this tells you how the system over here at r prime, uh, sorry, r and t, what that response is, right? So you you poke something here, and because of the interactions and so on, there's a response of the system to that poke over here, mm -hmm. right? This is how this how this response to something r prime t prime is given by chi of r t r prime t prime. So that's kind of physically what this response function tells you. So then you, in this very beautiful, fuckable um, <laughs> schema, <laughs> we have endian uh, ground state density, which also show, in, show in position maybe a lot. Uh, you're talking about, about this, or uh, yeah? So this, I'm saying. So this is overall space, right? Um, because you 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 were very well said that you poke somewhere in the position R prime, and yes. you the response in the position of R. Yes. And then so N zero could be just uh, yeah. This is not then so another exactly. Well, well, this is just the whole function over all space. Okay, so, so I can think of this as my R. Right, or maybe I'll call it a big R, right? So this is my just a function. Yeah, no, it's a, okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. So the equation that you have circled on this board yes. it has to be solved self consistently? Yes. So so and it looks like uh, so in practice people don't really do this. In fact, for solids there are ways that you you, you, you begin with some 
chi s, and there's a way, and you can tend to do this. But in, in for finite systems, you typically translate this into a set of matrix equations on the basis of single excitations. So, and this, in fact, um, I can give you references to see where it works out. It's, it's not easy. There's many, many steps, math, messy math. It's not conceptually difficult. I should also say that Mark Cassie, that when he derived these, uh, his, uh, because this is sometimes done as Cassie equations, matrix equations. When he derived them, he didn't begin with this kind of formulas. He thought about the density matrix of the Comcham system and thought about responses of this. So this derivation is very different. It comes to the same result as if you take this and you kind of decompose it into a basis of single excitations. And then you look, then you, you, the problem reduces to finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. Um, and that's what's in the codes like Gaussian or NWCAN or any of the standard finite systems code. Yeah. I just have a short question. Why do we say the linear response and not just a response theory? Because I would expect linear should be something that I see in, in a graph, which is just, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good so, so remember when we started out uh, here, when we looked at the response theory of circle, I picked, we, 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 we wrote it up, uh, we wrote out the wave function, right? But we only kept the term that went as delta v in psi. And I had plus order delta v squared. Yeah. This is where the linear is coming in. I'm, we're only looking at the response, which goes linearly with the delta v. Right? But you have a good point because, in fact, the theorems of TVDFT tell you that who cares what order it is, I'm get, going to get my same density from my Cohn-Sham system as my true system. In fact, you can also define quadratic response, higher order response, get hyperpolarizabilities and all this stuff from TVDFT. You'll have different functions than this. You'll have uh, four points or more, more, more arguments <laughs> and more frequencies, right, over the one, over the two, and so on. But, you, but the theory exists, and uh, it's long <laughs> matrix equations also, right? Because again, you translate it into matrices uh, to get the to make it work. Um, uh, but you, and you can uh, again, I can give you references. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you start with the oh, sorry. 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 Yeah, sorry. So the cool, when we start with the cool sham equations, we say that the density we are taking for the non-interacting is the same as the interacting. Yes. And then we calculate the response of the non-interacting cool sham system. Yeah. And this equation is just the cool sham uh, response plus some corrections. Right. So so yes. So this is the cool sham response function. So the thing is, uh, right. So so this here must be equal to, this is the density, right? This is the density response, the cone sham. This is the, I could say this is the cone sham response, because I'm putting mm -hmm. it in terms. But, I, but this must equal the, the regular, the interacting response, right? And so this must equal the same, you know, integral of chi, yeah, RT, R prime, T prime, um, delta V. And this is, in fact, exactly, by making the, this analogy, the, the equality, this is exactly how we get this equation which I didn't show you, <laughs> but essentially by, by making sure that these are the same, you can prove um, that, that this patterns, right? So you, can, uh, you have it's a bit tricky because of course you have to relate the delta V to the delta Vs, and this is where functional chain rule comes in, but it's not so tricky actually. Yeah, you get the correction on the response function, not on the density response because that's the same, right? Yeah. Yeah, so actually, sorry. So the thing is that the role of this, remember I said that this is completely different, the poles are not the same. The role of this term is to shift the poles so that they're the same. Yeah, okay. yeah. and sorry. Yeah. Actually, it was part of my question. So uh, there is this uh, formula for first order directions to density. Yeah, for first order, yes. Correct to density, and you said that if we use on sham, we will obtain the same first order. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, so we know this direction from usual Gaussian calculations without any time dependent equations, right? Yeah, you're saying. And we know all spectra, all poles, right? From uh, usual Gaussian equations. You're saying from the ground state Gaussian equations? Yes, but from yeah. H0. Right, from H0, what we can get are these things, are these orbital energies these ek minus ej, these orbital energy differences, and these orbit, uh, you know, uh, excited orbitals, unoccupied orbitals, and ground state orbitals, right? But 
do they the same as you wrote on the this? Yeah. Yeah. So these are not the same. Not the same. Yeah, so that so this is the point here, right? So so the response function, the Kunshan response function, the chi s, the density this is not the same as chi, right? The poles lie in a completely different place, right? What is the same is once I take that response function, integrate it over the Kunshan potential and do this integral, and then I take the true response function. And I integrate it over the, the change in the applied potential. Those are the same. These things here must be the same. These are the same here, right? But this is not the same as this, right? Right? Because you know these must be the same because yes, it's just fine. This one here is being multiplied by the the change in the applied potential, the physical potential. This thing here is being made by the change in the Kohn-Sham potential. These are not the same things, right? Because if I if I perturb my true system, I get a change in the heart rate, for example, right? So this has other terms in it, right? And, and so the magic, or if you like the, the, the how TDFT works, is that if you take these things, integrate them against each other, take these two, integrate them against each other, you get the same response, right? But it means that each factor here. This is not equal to this. This is not equal to this. But you can relate them. And I, yeah, maybe I yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If we have this susceptibility, oh. yeah. uh, it's <coughs> exact uh, term, right? Yes. If we want the citation. Yes, exactly. Right. Exact, so. Uh, if you put away the fact that it's only in a response. Yes, exactly. You're right. So if I had this exact kernel, if I knew this functional exactly, then this procedure will give me the exact response function up to the new response. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You are the next in line, and then you come the next. You, you are the next. Okay. <laughs> So, if I, uh, I want to be sure, I just want to be sure that I have got uh, a recipe to calculate inside the state uh, energy through a little bit of T using consum um, equation gives me the um, cross state density, yeah. which I keep, uh, I can obtain this uh, response by saying perturbative consum uh, potential. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from this, uh, uh, where you told that I will find the key from uh, key quotient, high quotient. Yes. Uh -huh. And then once I have the key from the greater dimension, I can obtain my uh, excited relationship. Yeah. So so because I can't connect the, oh, but I see it. Mathematically, I see, but I can't believe that this way I don't think that Yeah, okay, so, so mathematically you're good, right? And so more, yeah. okay, so physically what's happening is that, um, you, you're, you, as you said, you have your ground state cone chance system, right? And you can you can think about excitations of that system right? in response, okay? So, and and once you have the ground state cone chance potential, you can compute these, right? You know the orbital energies, you know, um, the uh, uh, the orbitals, right? So, yes. you can do, so you can compute chi s if you like. Right? Now, to get the true response, right, of the system, then what we need to do is, uh, well, uh, what we need to do is you apply mm -hmm. that, that tells you the response of the cone sham system to a cone sham potential to a cone sham perturbation, a delta v s. Yes. Okay, that is going to be equal because the density responses are equal in the true and the cone sham. That chi s multiplied by the delta v s is going to be equal to the true cone sham, uh, so the true response function multiplied by the true change in the and the applied potential, right? And so then then those two are the same. So okay, so that so also uh, another way to think about this is this is equal to this plus sorry plus this correction. What does this correction do? If this was exact, right? So what it does essentially is mixes up all the different excitations of the cone sham system, right? It mixes, it adds and subtracts and does all and takes linear combinations of, of different orbital excitations in such a way that you get the true excitations. So if, if I didn't tell you about TDDFT and I said, okay, I have some reference system and I want to know what my true excitations are, 
you might think, well, I know from quantum mechanics, it's a complete basis, my reference system. So I could always write my interacting system, my, my excited state, as a linear combination of, of these states. Right? In some sense, this is doing your linear combination for you. Now, that's a bit hand wavy because it doesn't give you excited states. It only gives you transition densities to those excited states. It doesn't give you psi j, right? It gives you psi, uh, psi zero and at psi j, right? It gives you the oscillator strengths, right? The transition, but, but, but conceptually, that's kind of what's happening. Yeah. Okay, there's a short last question. Yeah. Uh, why is God Ah, good question. Okay, so 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 remember when we when we originally uh, uh, derived chi, what we what we said was we have a our system and we perturb it. We have an unperturbed system, we perturb it, and then um, we wrote the first order response. Now, when we wrote that first order response, we had a term like this. We had delta n equals um, chi, and we had delta v, right? Okay. So so yeah, and then actually. All we're looking, so at this point, once we extract this, the delta V is gone. It's kind of like saying, whatever I apply to my system, I'm going to get my delta N using this chi, right? So this is a function only of the unperturbed system. Another, maybe another way to say that, see this, is just from this expression here. What's involved here are the unperturbed excited states, psi J, the unperturbed ground state, right? Unperturbed energy. Everything is unperturbed. Exactly. Everything's unperturbed, right? So in other words, so so and uh, so what does that mean? It means that only V0, the, the, if I'm given if I, you give me V0, the unperturbed V0, I can give you the cut, right? Now and and DIT we don't talk about V0, we talk about N0, right? So if I give you the N0, uh yeah by Holmberg, come on, if I give you the N0. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. So ooh. So it's time to. I ask okay, so can I ask a quick question first, to the, so just for the lecture for the eve, um, in the afternoon? Um, do you, would you like to hear about how, um, how how to derive this, or would you rather? Okay, so how many people would like to hear about it, and how many people would just want to hear about memory? Or, so who wants to hear about this, the derivation? Okay, uh, uh, maybe I don't know. What should I do? Uh, this is like maybe uh, a third of a half. Should I, should I derive it here on our Okay, the first part of derivation. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All right, okay. All right, so let's start the next lecture. I think. So, Adam, Adam, we'll go to the